Hi and welcome to this quick video on using MakeTile to easily create textured bases for your miniatures. MakeTile is a free plugin for Blender that I've been developing and it's usually used for creating 3D printed procedural dungeon tiles, hence the name. However it also has a feature where you can take any mesh and convert it into a MakeTile object and then use the MakeTile material system to add textures areas, which is uh, pretty useful for creating mini bases. I've uploaded a pack of Remix 40k style bases to Cults 3D that are already set up for use with MakeTile. You'll need the latest version of Blender and the latest version of the MakeTile plugin installed. Um, I'll link to those in the description. Um, there's videos on my YouTube channel and Facebook page on how to install MakeTile and on the basic Blender controls. In the pack available on Cults 3D, as well as STLs of each of the individual bases, there's a blend file called bases1.blend. Open this and you'll find four sets of bases, uh, two sets which are hollow and uh, two sets which are solid. Apart from that, the only difference is that one set of bases has an additional edge loop. So when you use those, uh, you'll get a small blank area on your base, whereas on the others, you won't. And that's just an aesthetic preference thing of mine. Blender uses a different scale to most 3D programs. So currently these uh, bases are much too big for the material default used in MakeTile so we need to rescale them. By default, MakeTile considers one of these grid squares, which is a Blender unit, uh, to be equivalent to one inch. Um, while the bases and uh, most 3D printable meshes you'll find as STLs um, default to one Blender unit being equal to one millimeter, like you can see here. Um, so provided you've got MakeTile installed and on the right hand side, uh, you should have a tab which says MakeTile. OK, um, if you can't see anything here, if you don't have a menu, um, then you need to press N on the keyboard um, or click this little arrow here and that will pull out the right hand menu, which is the end menu in Blender speak. Um, so if you scroll down to uh, the object converter um, sub panel in make tile, uh, make sure you've got your uh, base selected and click on uh, rescale object then that will uh, shrink the tile right down to the right size for us. Um, so uh, to center the camera on the uh, base then just press period on the numpad. If you don't have a numpad uh, come up here and go view and uh, frame selected and you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel and uh, if you hold down the mouse wheel then the uh, camera will rotate around your base. In the make tile menu I'm going to make sure that I've got uh, my render engine uh, set to EV and then I'm going to click on create lighting setup and uh, that means that when I convert this into a make tile object uh, the textures are going to be displayed. Um, so I'm just going to uh, select it by left clicking on it and then I'm going to come down to object converter and I'm going to click on convert to make tile object. You can see we've now got a uh, this is a default stone material um, applied to our base. Um, so if I scroll up here to the top of the Make Tile menu, and uh, with my base selected, uh, you'll see Make Three D will appear. If I click on that, uh, then it's going to take the texture which we've applied, and it's going to uh, create a displacement texture out of it, and it's going to displace the mesh. So this is, you know, real geometry which has been displaced. Now obviously, this isn't exactly what we want because we only want the top of the base to be being displaced. Uh, so I'm going to click on Return to Preview, and then I'm going to scroll down here and open up these two sub panels, which are Materials and Textured Areas. And in the textured areas sub panel, I'm going to make sure I've got all selected. I'm going to click on remove material. And I'll get rid of the material from the whole of the base. I'm then going to uh, click on top. And I'm going to click on uh, the basic stone one material. Um, and then I'm going to click on assign material. And that's going to assign our material just to the top of the tile of the base, in fact. Um, so I'm now going to make that 3D. And you can see, yeah, that's just on the uh, top of the base now where we want. And we've got a bit of pixelation coming on. You have to remember this is going to be 3D printed, so you probably wouldn't see that even if you print it out on a resin printer because this is a 32 millimeter base. But if you do want extra um, resolution, you can just come down here. You've got modifier subdivisions and uh, just turn that up and I'll turn it up to five and that will, you know, increase the resolution to a point where, yeah, you're not you're not going to be losing any any detail at all when you print that out. 
Okay, so I'm going to uh, click on Return to Preview, and I'm going to have a little bit of a play around with this texture. Um, so if you've used uh, MakeTile before, then you'll know that uh, the default textures in MakeTile are procedural, so you can uh, change various options of them and generate uh, different materials based on the, the options you choose. So I'm going to come down here to uh, Material Options, um, just make sure that I've got the stone uh, material selected. Um, and then if I want to sort of just generate a, a random variant of this, this stone texture, um, I can come down here and I've got a seed, a randomized function. I have to change that number and it'll just generate a, you know, a random pattern for us. Um, I can sort of have a bit more control if I sort of, you know, just move the uh, location or the X and the Y location. Um, of the pattern and I can you know rotate it around as well um, I can scale it up and down if I want um, so there's other things I can do so the dress stone surface is the, the flattening off of the top so if I uh, get rid of that then this is when I make this 3d now uh, let's have a look at what that looks like still getting some flattening because the strength is too high but we're sort of preserving more of the um the curvature and whatever so i'll just uh, return that to preview and if i turn the strength down to uh, say 0 0.5 uh, maybe 0.75 and then make 3d more sort of yeah it's all kind of curvy and whatever um right let's just return to preview uh, so there are various sort of controls you can play about with with this one material um and you can find more about that in the uh intro to materials video on my youtube channel um you can also swap over this procedural material for another one uh, so a suitable one would be the cobbles material um which is a you know cobbly material um and just click on make 3d and uh yeah that's a you know a cobbles uh surface um but the place where uh make tile really shines when it comes to uh miniature bases is you can uh, also use uh, displacement maps or height maps um to uh, to displace this mesh um and it's set up with a uh, material already created which is called a custom image material so if i switch over to that and uh, then I come down to the material options and I click on open and I navigate to uh, my textures folder. I've got CC0 textures and I'm just going to uh, put this up to uh, thumbnails and yeah. So what I've got here is I've got a uh, texture pack which I've downloaded from CC0 textures so this is a you know CC0 texture so it's uh, completely free and you can do whatever you want with it um, and in it there is a displacement map and all the displacement map is is a black and white image um, and uh, if I just open that and apply it to the top of my tile I'm just going to pull up the image editor uh, in Blender and where are we going? That one. So we can see this a bit better. And so this is the the displacement map which we're using. It's just a grayscale image. Um, the black areas sort of represent the lowest point in 3D space. The white areas are the highest point, and the grey areas are sort of the gradations in between. Um, and this is a 4K image, so there's lots and lots of detail in it. Um, so I'm just going to drag that back down. Now, obviously, if I just make this 3D, it's gonna—it's far too small, all this detail. So I'm going to uh, come down here and I'm going to scale this down to 0.1. Um, and in Blender land, turning the scale down on an image uh, increases its size because uh, Blender is insane and was written by Dutch people. Um, <laughs> right, so uh, if I just click on Make 3D now, um, you'll see that... Um, that yeah, we now have just very, very easily a nice looking science fiction-y uh, tile. And so if I return to preview and come down to the um, uh, to the uh, 
material options, I can tweak the location and uh, make tile will pick a different location on the surface. Uh, so here, uh, for example, and I make that 3D. And yeah, we've got a different type of base. Um, okay, so I'm just going to return to preview. I'm going to show you how to export these bases. Um, now, obviously, we rescaled everything. So this is, if I just export this in the usual Blender fashion, which would be to go File, uh, Export, STL, it would come out tiny, tiny, and you'd have to rescale it in your uh, slicer. Um, so the um, the exporter, which is included in, in Make Tile, uh, will do that for you. Just make sure you've got the units uh, set to inches, which is the same units as you had when you rescaled your object um, on importing it. Right, so... Um, You've got a couple of options here. Um, the first one is the randomize function. Um, and if I uh, have this set to uh, four, say, and have randomize selected, click on export tile, it will export uh, four random variants like this. Um, which, you know, great, fan fantastic. Uh, what it's doing is it's picking a, a different location at random on the texture, and it's generating the, the base from that. Um, so the only thing is, is that uh, these meshes by default will be extremely large because they're being subdivided, subdivided lots and lots of times. So they'll be sort of 30, 40 megabyte uh, meshes, um, which means that you might have issues slicing them and also, you know, using up your hard disk space. Um, so the best thing to do to reduce file size is to voxelize them when you're exporting them. And you can do that. Uh, by coming up here, and uh, after you've made something 3D, so this is in preview mode, so I'm just going to make it 3D again. Um, you can voxelize something or you can voxelize it on export. Now I'm going to voxelize this first and then undo it because uh, this will let us see what this mesh looks like with the default voxelization settings on. So looks like that and yeah that looks really rubbish um, and that's because um, the voxel is basically too big um, and we're losing all the details so I'm just going to undo that by pressing Control and Z um, and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to turn down the quality to 0 0.0025 and the quality in this case uh, controls the size of the voxels so if I make the voxel smaller it's going to pick up more detail um, the adaptivity um, basically controls how much the flat bits are going to be simplified after it's been voxelized. So I'm going to bump that up a little bit to 0.1. And I'm going to click on voxelize object. I'm going to wait for a sec. Right, and that's been voxelized. And if I uh, tab into edit mode, um, you can see that it's, you know, preserved most of the detail in the uh, sort of you know, the detailed areas, but it's sort of simplified the mesh a bit, at least, um, on the flat areas. Um, so I now just need to uh, undo that completely. So I'm going to press Control and Z and Control and Z and Control and Z until it's no longer voxelized. Again. Um, and then I'm going to come down here, uh, turn voxelize on, have my variants set at 4, and click on Export Tile. The exporter will take a little bit of time to run, um, so don't be surprised if everything freezes for a bit and um, it looks like it's crashed. It hasn't, it's just thinking away in the background. Um, and yeah, eventually it Blender will sort of wake up again. Um, it just that it does take quite a long time to uh, voxelize these meshes and uh, bake out the textures and all that kind of stuff because they've got a lot of subdivisions on them. Right, so... Um, so yeah, so that's the sort of the uh, basics of uh, how to make your own bases um, using uh, sort of texture bases using Make Tile. Um, I did have to do a little bit of work on these meshes um, to get them prepared, and I'll cover that in another video, um, which will be uh, covering on how to prepare um, and what you need to do to meshes to make them ready to use with Make Tile. Basically, it involves making a vertex group and um, deciding that that's where you want your textures to be applied to. Um, and if you know how to use uh, Blender, then these textured areas, all they are is vertex groups. 
Right, so obviously you're not limited to just this sort of one displacement map. Um, you know, you can use any which you can download or create or whatever. Here are some which I've, you know, generated from like lots of other uh, displacement maps. Uh, these are all downloaded from CC0, uh, textures.com, there's other um, places you can download CC0 licensed textures. You can also obviously um, make them in Blender. Um, you can make them in uh, Substance Designer. Um, you can also um, take an image and uh, turn it into a uh, height map using uh, free software like uh, Materialize or like Awesome Bump, um, or I think it's Bitmap to Material, which is the, the really expensive substancy one, which does exactly the same thing. Um, so yeah, there's there's lots and lots of uh, ways of getting hold of hold of height maps. I've put up another video which. Uh, looks also at uh, using this custom image material but I've covered the basics here uh, and that's probably to be honest with you what you'll be wanting to use mostly with these uh, when you're generating bases um, because the the um, the procedural uh, materials in Metal are kind of they're almost placeholders at the moment it's it's very much an alpha program um, anyway I hope you've enjoyed this I hope you found it useful um, if you want to keep up to date with Make Tile, um, please, you know, follow me on YouTube or on the Facebook page. Um, it's uh, sort of still an early stage of development, but it's progressing pretty rapidly. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Thanks. Bye for now.